the numbers on the animals uh, that were shot and killed were two wolves, six black bears, two grizzly bears, nine male lions, eight lionesses, a baboon, three mountain lions, and 18 Bengal tigers. On October 19, 2011, Big Cat Rescue began to receive reports of wild cats on the loose in the state of Ohio. Each year from across the country, the sanctuary receives reports like this more often than you might expect. These calls are a result of the trade in exotic animals as so-called pets in the United States. The tragic events that unfolded that day in Zanesville, Ohio were shocking and would be reported by news organizations around the world. A private animal hoarder, Terry Thompson, who had been convicted of animal cruelty in 2005, deliberately released over 50 wild animals, including almost 40 lions, tigers, leopards, and cougars, before himself committing suicide. All but six of these magnificent animals were shot and killed by the Sheriff's Department. How does this happen? Is it legal for the public to own lions and tigers? Why weren't the animals sedated? The truth is that laws regarding the private ownership of exotic animals in the United States are more relaxed than you might expect, and Ohio has virtually no rules regarding the private possession of these animals. It is legal to own lions, tigers, and other exotic animals in approximately half of the United States. Many people buy these animals when they're babies, just like Terry Thompson did, having purchased a lion cub for his wife as a birthday present. These animals, however, soon mature into large, wild predators. It is then that most owners realize they've made a very bad decision. Oftentimes, the owner ends up selling their dangerous animal back into the exotic pet trade, where they either face a life behind bars being bred or are killed for their body parts. Even worse, some exotic animal owners continue to add to their collection, believing that they have a special bond with their so-called pets and do not see anything wrong with keeping a tiger or other exotic animal in their backyard or house. The animals that were set loose and ultimately killed in Ohio had done nothing wrong. They had been born into this world and sold for profit by breeders, condemning them to life in a tiny cage. Once set free, they were just doing what tigers and lions do, but ended up paying the ultimate price. In a crisis situation like this, the animals could not realistically be sedated. The first few attempts at darting these animals were unsuccessful. The drugs, even when administered in a controlled, quiet environment, often take a long time to have any effect. These animals, free for the first time in their lives, were scared, excited, and had adrenaline pumping, making for an even more dangerous situation for responding law enforcement officers. The Sheriff's Department should be commended for the difficult and heartbreaking job that they had to do to ensure the safety of the public. So what now? What needs to be done to make sure tragedies like this never occur again and put an end to the abuse of exotic animals held captive in private ownership across the country? We need to give these animals a voice, as they are not the ones to blame, yet they're always the ones that suffer. There will never be enough money or manpower to enforce the regulations that individual states have in place regarding the private possession of big cats and other exotic animals. Florida boasts the nation's toughest regulations, yet has the highest number of killings, maulings, and escapes by captive wild cats. The government of Ohio did ban the sale of big cats at auctions after this tragic event, but this is a very small part of the problem. They didn't ban the private possession of big cats, which is the only way we can really put an end to the exploitation and abuse of exotic animals. The main reason that so many big cats exist in backyards is due to the fact that the public will pay to have their photo taken or play with a cub. The cubs can only legally be handled by the public between the ages of 8 and 12 weeks, so the exploiters end up breeding a new litter every month to meet the demand. If the public refuse to participate in these events at circuses, fairs, zoos, and in neighbors' backyards, traveling acts using wild cats will become a thing of the past. You can be a voice for these animals. Please visit our website, bigcatrescue.org, where you will find different ways to speak out for these cats and other exotic animals. Together, we can help prevent tragedies like the one in Zanesville, Ohio. If they're out, put them down. Thanks for your support. Yeah, anything outside the perimeter gets definitely gets taken down.